I'm the clinical psychologist here at Phil Murray. I've been asked to offer some suggestions for coping with the heightened stress that we're all experiencing in light of the pandemic. And in light of the fact that we re return to school this year will be different than it's ever been. I'm gonna boil down my ideas for maintaining as much equilibrium as possible, down to an acronym of borrowed from psychologist Russ Harris who specializes in something called acceptance and commitment therapy. The acronym is appropriately named FACE COVID. The F in FACE is for focus. This means focus on what's in your control. You'd be incredibly unique if you haven't had an increase in anxiety in the past several months. We're bombarded with statistics, stories and drastic changes to our lives that have come about as a result of the global pandemic. While it's perfectly normal to worry, it's not usually particularly helpful. In fact, the more we focus on what's not in our control, the more hopeless or anxious we're likely to feel. So the single most useful thing anyone can do in any type of crisis, corona related or otherwise, is to focus on what's in your control. This is where a version of the serenity prayer comes in handy. You wanna have the courage to do what you have some control over, whether that be wearing a mask, washing your hands frequently, trying to observe social distance, stay home when you feel sick, stay away from grandparents or older folks if you think you've been in risky settings. Because it's important to know that what we do here and now can make a huge difference to us and to the community around us. At the same time, we need to recognize what we absolutely can't control, like other people's responses to the pandemic. Who gets infected and who doesn't? The weather, when you'll actually get to go to a Twins game again. To the best of your ability, you wanna make peace with accepting which things you control and which you don't. Sounds easy, but it's not always straightforward. Seek out prayer, meditation, conversation, Whatever helps you discern the differences between those things you can control and those you can't. The A in face COVID stands for acknowledge. Acknowledge your thoughts and feelings. A lot of us spend significant amounts of time trying to either ignore or bat away unpleasant thoughts and feelings. When we're not doing that, we're busy trying to hide our feelings from others in an effort to make ourselves seem like we have it all together. But the reality is we don't have control over our thoughts and feelings. They're going to come and go and we tend to create more problems for ourselves by fighting with them. So drop the struggle. Silently and kindly acknowledge whatever's showing up inside you, whatever thoughts, feelings, emotions, memories, or sensations, and then come back into your body. The C in face COVID stands for come back into your body. This might sound strange, but think about how when you're really upset about something, your mind is spinning out of control and tons of inter interesting things could be happening right in front of you, but you miss them because you're stuck in your head. You can connect to your physical body in a lot of different ways. You can simply notice how your body feels in the chair you're sitting in, or you can take time to notice five things in your environment that you see four things that you hear, three, three things you can touch, two things you can taste, one thing you can smell. The goal here is not to avoid or distract yourself from what's happening in your inner world, but just to make sure that you come in, into your physical being so you can be here right now. The E stands for engage in what you're doing. This means being present. We hear the fate phrase mindfulness tossed around a lot anymore and your ki kids hear it here at Phil Murray. When I suggest trying to be present in the moment, that doesn't mean necessarily sitting in a lotus position chanting for hours. It's really just the opposite of autopilot. Being present can mean simply drawing your attention to the thing you're doing, whether it's cooking dinner with your child, taking a shower, or talking to your partner. Start small and just really focus for five minutes. It can be on even the most mundane task because the better you anchor yourself in the here and now, the more control you have over action. The C in COVID stands for committed action. This means action that's guided by your values. 
actions you take because they're really important to you, even though they might bring up difficult thoughts and feelings. That's why it's important to ground yourself in the here and now, so you can go on to do the things that matter. Some of the things are the obvious ones we've talked about ad nauseum and that we've heard about through the media. Things that protect us and others from getting or spreading the coronavirus. But committed action also means finding ways to take care of yourself, nurture your family, show others that you care. This can range from a kind word to a neighbor who's having a hard time to playing games with your kids. This also means thinking about other activities or interests that you've always wanted to try or pursue that you haven't had time to. Maybe you want to start playing tennis more regularly, cooking Indian food, or practicing mindfulness or meditation. The bottom line is throughout the day, ask yourself, what can I do right now, no matter how small it may be, that improves life for myself, those I live with, or people in my community? And whatever the answer is, do it and engage in it fully. The O in COVID stands for opening up. This means opening up to difficult thoughts and feelings. We can't stop them from arising. They're normal, but we can make room for them. Acknowledge that they're normal. Allow them to be there even if they hurt and treat yourself kindly. Remember, self-kindness is essential if you want to cope well with the crisis, especially if you're in a caregiver role. Remember what the flight attendants tell you at the beginning of a flight. You're supposed to put on your oxygen mask before you help others. Well, self-compassion is your own oxygen mask. If you need to look after others, you'll do it a whole lot better if you're also taking care of yourself. The V in COVID stands for values. We've all experienced obstacles in life. For sure, no one has been immune to them during this pandemic. There are always going to be goals you can't achieve, trips you wanted to take but couldn't, and problems for which there are no simple solutions. But you can still live your values in a bunch of different ways, even in the face of all those challenges. Look for ways to cha change your values, whether they be love, respect, humor, patience, courage, honesty, or kindness into actions. The I is for identify resources. This means looking for assistance and support and advice from friends, family, neighbors, health professionals, even emergency services. Reach out to your social network, and if you're able to, offer support to others. And it's maybe just as important to limit your intake of news. Checking the news all day is a sure way to make yourself crazy and feel like the world is ending. And make sure your news is coming from credible sources. If you need more resources, check out the Hill Murray Guidance and Counseling webpage. There's a section called Resources that has a variety of websites, books, and podcasts that are useful for managing stress in this unprecedented time. And the D in COVID stands for disinfect and distance. And by that, I mean socially, but not emotionally. While this is bound to be an unusual school year, it comes with the opportunity for us to be flexible, creative, and extra kind to ourselves and others. Mm -hmm.